So good afternoon and welcome to one of our open evening Zooms. It's designed specifically to provide an overview of the Worshipful Company of Engineers. My name is Raymond Joyce and I joined the company 12 years ago and I'm currently in the middle of my year as master. The key thing to appreciate is that the Worshipful Company of Engineers is not a learned institution. We do not provide CPD, so the big question is, what are we? In a nutshell, we provide an environment for experienced and successful engineers to meet regularly over dinner and a drink. Two, we raise money for supporting young and ambitious engineers who need or deserve our support. And finally, we are a platform within the City of London to engage in dialogue with other livery companies and the Lord Mayor to provide advice to bankers, insurers, and investors in engineering. The city is important to engineering because low or no investment directly affects us as engineers and our economy. You will hear from our speakers about the livery community and its history, the activities that you can participate in within the company, our charitable support, and finishing up with an online groups to learn more about some of the, those points in more depth in conversation with other members of the company. And I shall be in one of the breakout rooms as well. I very much hope that you'll enjoy and be enthused by what you hear and that I'll have the opportunity of welcoming you to the company at some time in the future. So I'll now hand you over to the clerk. Uh, livery companies have their origins in the promotion, regulation and advancement of medieval and even earlier trades and crafts. They evolved through the historic fraternities and guilds set up within the boundary of a city's walls to regulate apprenticeships, industry standards, working conditions, wages and welfare, and to provide support in sickness and old age. London's livery companies today vary considerably in terms of their age, size and wealth, and regional guilds persist elsewhere, including the Hallamshire Cutlers in Sheffield, many trading corporations in Scottish cities. Why Worshipful and why Livery? In London, the livery came to the fore when the Royal Court moved out of the city, leaving it to become the centre for trade and residential accommodation. Workers of the same trade lived close together and many city street names still indicate those origins like Milk Street, Bread Street, Poultry. Local tradesmen formed networks to regulate competition and professional standards. Living together led to practising faith together, hence the term worshipful. Although today's livery movement, members can be of any faith or none at all. The term livery originated in the specific form of dress worn by retainers of a nobleman and then by extension to special dress to denote status of belonging to a particular trade. That dress persists to this day in the form of elaborate gowns unique to each company. Today's companies support, and a few still regulate, their professions. They educate and they train young people and contribute philanthropically to counter hardship. The modern livery thrives through individual companies' support for their trade or its modern interpretation, and collectively their philanthropic, charitable and educational good causes, raising in excess of £70 million a year, which would make them one of the top six grant makers in the UK if they were a single organisation. They foster fellowship within membership and by supporting the work of the Lord Mayor and the City of London Corporation. Through that support, the livery promotes the leadership of the city on a world stage, and the trade and commerce of the United Kingdom worldwide. The livery companies take part in many ceremonial occasions in, and maintain city traditions. Members of the livery alone are responsible annually for election of the Lord Mayor, the London sheriffs and other officials within the square mile. In its 40 years existence, this company can count four Lord Mayors amongst its membership. Pictured here is Alderman Professor Michael Minnelli, who was recently elected as the 695th and current Lord Mayor and is an honorary liveryman of the Worshipful Company of Engineers. Today's livery comprises 111 different companies, 77 deemed to be ancient 
and 34 modern, that is formed post 1926. Their collective membership is over 26,000 strong. 42 companies, mostly ancient but not exclusively so, have halls where they meet. As shown, they also support some 153 schools or colleges, 65 churches, and are affiliated with the armed forces and cadet organisations. Together, they are central to the life, governance and vibrancy of the City of London. Joining a worshipful company gave the right to be awarded freedom of the city, originally a licence to practise trade within the city walls. It also conferred freedom from certain taxes, seizure by a press gang, and even the rights to drive sheep across London Bridge, although these rights are now purely symbolic. Although the Woolmen do organise an annual charity sheep drive across a London Bridge, where freemen can ex exercise their ancient right. And yes, that is me in 2021 doing the sheep drive. I'll now hand over to Middle Warden Penny Taylor, who will talk a bit more about the company. Good evening and welcome, welcome to this open evening. So my name's Penny Taylor. I am currently Middle Warden and I've been uh, serving with the Worshipful Company of Engineers now for about 25 years. So what is the company and why should you join us? Uh, there's a very good quote there about what we're about. We are the 94th livery company of the City of London and the 10th to be formed since the Second World War. The only requirement to be a member of the company is to be a chartered engineer recognised by the Engineering Council. But having said that, many of us also hold fellowships with our own home institutions or our fellows of the Royal Academy of Engineering. We are one of a relatively small number of companies where partners are actively encouraged to get involved as well. So um, one of the things that I like about being a member of the company is that this is our opportunity to exchange cross-disciplinary -discipl engineering thinking. So being involved with my professional engineering institution, my home institution is the Institution of Mechanical Engineers. This is one of the places where I get an opportunity to, to share ideas with engineers of other disciplines. And I find that really, really useful and very uh, stimulating. Many of our members are from the big three, the IET, the IMECI, or the civils, but we also have members from some of the smaller institutions like the chemicals, the structurals, SIBSI, SARS, and RENA, to name but a few. In line with our livery traditions, we have three main aims. The first one is the support of the Engineers Trust, which is about supporting the education of engineers, promoting their achievements, and providing sponsorship and awards. And our trust chairman, uh, Professor Gordon Masterton, will talk more about this a little bit later on. So th that's all I was going to say at this stage. Our second aim is to represent the engineering profession to the City of London. And we do that through holding technical seminars, briefing to key city figures, such as the sheriffs and the Lord Mayors, and also, opportunities to get mentoring for any of our members who might aspire to city office. Our third aim is fellowship. Fellowship at a number of prestigious city venues, such as the livery halls, and also a number of regional activities. So the big regional activity every year is the out of town, but we also have been putting together a programme of heritage visits, technical visits, walks and more informal social events. So good opportunities to get to know your fellow liverymen. The livery is governed by the court. Uh, and you can see in the top photo here, this is a, a photo taken from a court meeting. So the court comprises the master, the three wardens, junior, middle and senior, who serve for a year apiece. A number of court assistants who serve for seven years and are elected by the livery. We have a number of past masters who carry on voting so that we're able to take advantage of their experience for a period of five years. We have an honorary chaplain and occasional assistants emeritus who are non-voting. 
And if you look on at the lower photo here, you can see from the right hand side, the junior warden, me as the middle warden, Dr. Dolores Byrne as the senior warden and Raymond who introduced himself earlier in the, the fur robe as the master. So if all goes to plan, we all progress slightly to the left every year. The next slide I have shows you the annual court cycle, which the engineers company starts its year with the installation of the new master, which you can see at about four o'clock on this on this clock face. So a livery year would go from installing the new master wardens and assistants to the court in April with our annual general meeting. We then have the July court and awards meeting. There is usually the out of town in September or just before uh, academic year starts. We have a court meeting in October, our annual banquet at the Mansion House in the end of October, beginning of November, and then the carol service in December. So across the year, we would expect to have five court meetings and four eminent dining nights, plus a number of other smaller meetings, informal meetings and activities of committees and so on to select the officers for the year, the year ensuing. So one of the things that we have the honour of doing is electing the City of London Sheriffs, which comes from a charter of King John back in 1199. So firmly rooted in tradition and heritage. We have the role of confirming the Lord Mayor and the responsibility of invol getting involved in governing the City of London Corporation. And as was mentioned earlier, there is also charitable giving across all the livery companies of around £70 million, most of which goes for educational support. As well as that, there are a number of pro bono activities which our members get involved in alongside the members of other livery companies using their skills, abilities and time to work for the benefit of the company and for other livery members. This slide shows a number of our events. And in return for promoting engineering to the city, we get the opportunity to influence direction and be present at prestigious technical meetings held in eminent city halls and other locations. So some of the meetings that you can see here, the Worshipful Company of Information Technologists held a debate on policing in the city. There was a lecture given by one of our masters, Back to the Future at Ironmongers Hall. We had a junior wardens lecture on computer systems and safety at the Royal Astronomical Society. And we've recently had a visit to the Toshiba Labs in Cambridge to hear about quantum computing. My next slide shows some other technical visits, the kind of different kinds of visits. So uh, a few years ago, we had a visit to the Large Hadron Collider in CERN during a period of maintenance shutdown. So we were actually able to go right down to the bottom of the Large Hadron Collider, which was, which was very impressive. We've had a couple of visits to the construction of the crossrail stations. We had a visit to Bryce Norton to hear about the education of military engineering apprentices. And we also had an opportunity to go and have a look at the Northern Line tunnel boring machines before they were finally buried. Our recent out of town, uh, September just gone, was in Birmingham, where we had an opportunity to go and talk and look at the current state of build of HS2 and Curzon Street Station in Birmingham. We had a visit to the National Highways Agency to see and hear their control room, a bit more about how smart motorways work and how they support broken down motorists. And we had a heritage trip to Litchfield and the National Memorial Arboretum. When COVID hit, it obviously put a dampener on our programme of activities, as, as it did for everybody. And within the space of five days, we'd been able to pivot and put some of our activities online. And we started doing a series of virtual engineering soirees, as we will be doing one later on this evening when this session has finished. Most of our soirees have been delivered by individual members of the livery on subjects that, that they're particularly passionate or uh, knowledgeable about. But we all have also had some guest presenters from some of our award winners along the way. 
And we continue to hold these soirees probably two or three times a year because it's particularly helpful for some of our members who perhaps have lost their confidence of going into the, the cen centre of the City of London, but still want to stay engaged and involved and enjoy the activities that we put on. One of the key things that we have is the opportunity to dine in some of the most prestigious venues in London. So some of the pictures we have here show Waterman's Hall, Barber Surgeon's Hall, um, annual banquet at the Mansion House, and you'll see the tradition of the Loving Cup in the, the two lower photos, which dates back to Saxon times following the murder of King Edward the Martyr. And should you come to one of our formal dinners, you'll find out a lot more about it and how to do it. This was our most recent annual banquet, which was the 40th anniversary of our uh, Royal Charter being signed. And as you can see in the in the picture, we have the Lord Mayor of the city, Her Royal Highness Princess Anne, and a couple of the sheriffs, along with all the other officers of the company. So this was taken at the annual banquet at the Mansion House only a few weeks ago, and a lovely evening it was too. As I said, we do like to get out into the regions. Um, we are London based, but opportunities to take some of our London members to other places that we're interested in and, and find interesting engineering is, is a good thing. So we try, try and do regional engineering activities as well. So some of the things that you can see on these pictures, uh, down at the bottom left, we had a formal dinner in the baths at Bath, which was very nice. The bottom right, we had a visit to the Torside Reservoir in Derbyshire, which was, as you can see, the, the water levels are very low. And this was just before the reservoir actually um, dried up completely. We had a fantastic evening at the officers' mess in Plymouth with a very moving lowering the flag service before we went into dinner. So a number of different places that we've had the opportunity to visit. And then my next slide shows you that we do actually know how to let our hair down. Every every now and again, we have a Kaylee or a disco or a, a dance of some, some sort. Uh, so there is the informal activities as well. We're also interested in engineering heritage. So this comes under the title of social exercise and fun. And sometimes this might be things like walks, talks, uh, visits, all sorts of things. So recently we've done activities to the Avon and Kennet Canal to look at the longest flight of locks in the UK. The photo in the middle of the gentleman with the head torch is one of our members who took us to visit a free mine in the Forest of Dean. We've done some recent visits to the Bluebell and Ironbridge uh, railways. And we've been to some iconic London sites, such as a, a walk to the Thames Barrier. So there'll be two or three activities of that kind every year in the programme. As I said earlier, we do strongly encourage partners and companions to, to get involved in our activities. Many of the livery companies are members only with partners being encouraged to come to things very rarely, whereas the Engineers is a very social, uh, social company and we encourage partners and companions to get involved. And there are occasions where there are specific partners and companions events put on. So uh, lunches and, and lectures, things of that nature. And one of the pictures here shows us an annual lunch held at the HQS Wellington, which is one of the few livery halls that's actually a ship rather than a, a ground based structure. And I think at that point, I'm holding, handing over to Professor Gordon Masterton, the chair of the Engineers Trust, to talk about our charitable activities. Well, thanks very much, Penny, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm, as Penny said, uh, Gordon Masterton, chair of the Engineers Trust, which is the charitable arm of the Worshipful Company of Engineers. And it was set up in 1984, just a year after the company, to fulfil three of the company's core objectives, uh, to promote excellence in engineering, to support engineering education and research, and in some instances, the relief of poverty of members or, or dependents, that's in our charter. And the trust receives funds through two primary channels, regular giving from generous members and legacies. 
Uh, and over the years, it's also benefited from a successful investment portfolio. And since the founding of the trust, it's grown to currently over £1.6 million of invested funds, whilst still giving year on year over £100,000 of awards each year. The trust achieves its objectives principally by giving annual awards and prizes to engineers or aspiring engineers, uh, often in conjunction with the Royal Academy of Engineering or other partners, for example, the, the McRobert Award for Engineering, the Oscar for Engineering in the UK. For the engineers company to, to make a real impact by encouraging the best talent of future generations into engineering, it needs a strong and growing charitable arm. It's the primary vehicle for company members to give something back to the profession by investing in its future. It's managed by trustees from the company membership, plus an external independent trustee. And the trustees really are simply brief, short-term custodians for the fund, which is intended to be growing in perpetuity. And to remain relevant in perpetuity, it also means that the value of the fund has to continue to grow faster than inflation. And trustees are targeting to have reached three million pounds of invested funds by 2034, which will be its 50th anniversary. The point of it all, though, is the people that we support. Top left, that's Corporal Adams, the Army's Engineer Soldier of the Year. Bottom left is Julia Corre, a, a biomedical engineering PhD student at Glasgow University. She won the Mercia Award. To the right of Julia is Jen McEwen, a primary school teacher in Ayrshire, who won the Stevenson Award, sponsored really by members of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, for encouraging young people into engineering. And on the right are the children from Zindonda in Zambia, celebrating their new water supply from the charity Just a Drop that we supported for two successive years. And top centre is Gayatri Sundar Rajan, an MPhil student at Oxford University, being presented with our first award of £20,000 made in conjunction with UK charity Tech for All for engineering applied to the relief of poverty and hardship. And seeing these wonderful beneficiaries. I hope that you'll also be inspired to be a willing donor to the Engineers Trust and offer to help with the organising and mentoring of the many awardees. Philanthropy really is in the DNA of the company, as in many livery companies, with, in our case, the future of engineering at its heart. Thank you. And Gordon there mentioned um, support for uh, members of the company. We have two specific uh, people who um, act in support of the members of the company, and they are the honorary chaplain and the almoner. Uh, the chaplain, amongst other things, leads a couple of services every year, but both of these people provide uh, support for our members, uh, keeping contact with members, spouses, family, companions, widows, widowers, uh, maintaining contact and overseeing the companion network and in particular making sure that we have a good carol service every year as part of that process. Now the next steps part. All of you who are on the call should have received from me an application pack which includes an application form, a list of members and um, a guide to membership which gives you information about what it actually costs and what the process is for applying for membership. If you have any questions in relation to that, or you haven't received or can't find your application pack, just use the email address at the bottom, get in touch with me, and I will answer any of your questions and provide what you need. To apply for membership, there are two routes. You either need sponsorship by three members of the company, or um, following a brief interview with myself, a meeting and discussion with a panel of three members from the uh, membership committee. Uh, in both cases, your application form then goes to the court for approval. Uh, once you've been approved by the court, you're invited to read and sign a declaration as a member of the Freedom. Now, that can be done in two ways. 
Uh, if you want to make a, an event of it, come along to a court meeting, but there are only five court meetings a year, and do it in front of the court. If you want to get in quickly, come to my office and do it in front of me. I will make sure that you get a decent photograph of the event, uh, however you do it. Once you've joined the company, that get, then gives you the ability to apply to the Chamberlain's Court for membership of the Freedom of the City of London. Once you are a member of the Freedom of the Company and the Freedom of the City of London, provided you are also a fellow of a recognised engineering institution or the Royal Academy, you can then be invited to be clothed in the livery of the company. Plenty of links there for further information. I'm not expecting you to remember those or even to screenshot the page. Uh, if you need any links, the top three all go to our company website. Uh, the, the lower three, City of London website, uh, the Livery Committee website, and the London Freeman's Guide, which can be reached via cityandlivery.co.uk, are all also very useful forms of information. But I can provide you links to those if you need them. Just ask. So, there we have it. Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal said livery companies continue to do what they have done for most of their history. Within this diversity, livery companies are bound by their timeless ethos, which has at its core fellowship, welfare, education, supporting trade, and at times working in the best interest of the communities in which they operate. For those of us who are members of the company, we recognise that as being the yardstick and the measure by which we take part in activities and enjoy ourselves. 